For USCfootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber for instant analysis of day nine of USC's fall camp. And today was a lighter day in the sense that there was no pads. Uh, Clay Hilton said that they're moving more towards the regular season weekly schedule where there's no pads on Monday, uh, full pads on Tuesday, shells Wednesday and Thursday, no pads on Friday, and then a scrimmage on Saturday this week. So, uh, but Dan, what were your general impressions from today's practice? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um we don't normally they don't even count it as a practice you know during the during the season but i, I think they they kind of got into this uh this week a little sooner maybe than they thought they were but i think that's a reflection of the fact that they were pretty pleased with the uh, with the scrimmage saturday so i mean i think they're you know they're looking at this week i mean we don't have the mock game week until next week and then game week after that but i think they're Kind of, you know, saying we're, we're going to kind of follow that uh, pattern. Although, uh, you know, we'd heard it would be a, a little lighter than, it, than a practice was. It was an hour and 45 minutes. They did a lot of stuff today uh, and got, you know, got some guys back and, uh, you know, got guys that look like they're, you know, closer to, to being back. But uh, I thought it was, uh, and, and they, they did some things that you weren't uh, expecting, like uh, they broke out the noise machine and yeah. they really loud. That was the loudest crowd noise that I can remember since we've been here. It might be where it was placed or whatever. But, you know, talking about getting ready for games two and three on the road. So uh, I like that, that, you know, you're doing things maybe that, uh, that are not just the you know, same old routine yeah. and routine and routine. Uh, so uh, well, that's a pretty, pretty good day. And uh, uh, before a full pads practice uh, tomorrow and a big, you know, scrimmage on Saturday, yeah. Uh, I thought, thought they, uh, I thought they got pretty much out of today. Mm -hmm. I think that's the earliest we've ever heard crowd noise in a season, too. So that's, so that's an interesting note there. Uh, but Helta didn't want to make any uh, statements about the scrimmage on Saturday until he saw the film. He did see the film on Sunday. So what did what did the him uh, what did Helton and the coaches have to say about Saturday? I think the biggest takeaway was uh, from Clay, from T. Martin, and from Brian Ellis was uh, uh, the reaction to the eight sacks, and it was. For example, if you went on a, on the on the P, uh, the coaches on the P without having seen the film knew that that meant the offensive line is just worthless. Uh, according to the uh, all three of those uh, coaches after watching the film, that maybe uh, two of those were physical beats and that was it. Uh, that the rest were mostly uh, uh, and it wasn't the quarterbacks weren't getting him into the right protections that was a couple but more more often than not it was uh, quarterbacks not being in exactly the right place in terms of where they should be for the for their own uh, ability to throw the ball or not throwing the ball away uh, quickly enough that was the, the biggest problem is there were uh, all three of the quarterbacks had opportunities to get rid of the ball and come back for another play, and they didn't do it. They didn't recognize it. JT, it was once, and uh, more for the other, uh, the other Matt and Jack. But uh, but I think that should make people feel better. That, that basically uh, the offensive line, they were pretty pleased with the offensive line. Not an analysis that uh, most uh, of our uh, P experts uh, probably picked up on right away on Saturday night. They knew uh, what that meant. That's why they watch the. That's why they watch the film. There, there really is a, a reason uh, to do that, and probably not make up your mind beforehand. Mm -hmm. Not to be a contrarian here or devil's advocate, but given what we've seen from the offensive line in the past, do you trust that evaluation from the coaches? Or are they trying to kind of share the blame a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I kind of, you know, I kind of trust it. I, I think this offensive line has made some progress. I don't think they're where they were. I didn't trust them, you know, last year in the Cotton Bowl. I didn't trust them before the Cotton Bowl uh, or after the Cotton Bowl. I didn't care what they said about anything. Uh, I think we know what happened in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, but uh, uh, I think I, I trust them a little bit that, uh, uh, that it was a case of you're going seven on seven or you can't quite approximate the speed of a you know, full speed uh, yep. you know, game type, game pressure uh, situation, which we've talked about was so what made it so difficult to decide that Sam Darnold was a quarterback because you couldn't get the uh, the kind of pressure and, and all of the things that he performed so well against uh, when he was uh, you know two years ago so uh, so I think they they realized that they 
as much as they've tried, I mean, they've really tried to, you know, put the pressure on the quarterbacks and all that. They realized that they probably needed Saturday to get them up to, you know, that realization of, okay, this is when you have to kill the ball. You just throw it away. You see them coming and, and you throw it away. And, uh, but they're not, they weren't mostly coming because they had beaten the guy that was supposed to block them. They were mostly coming because, uh, you know, they did something right on defense. And, uh, and those are the plays you just get rid of the ball. And they, they didn't do that, and they took the sack. And so that's a big emphasis, I think, right now. So I think that would be my, my number one takeaway. The second takeaway is they caught the ball really well. And that's not the kind of thing you expect to happen in the, necessarily in the first full pad scrimmage or the first time you're really uh, you know, going after it in the Coliseum. And both of those things uh, happen. And uh, I think they're, they're really pleased about that. Mm -hmm. It was an offensive day today. You got to talk to a lot of offensive players and coaches. What stood out to you about your interviews? Uh, I think that the, uh, I, I took two of the people I talked to, Andrew well, and, and Stephen Carr, too, two, two tailbacks, Stephen Carr and Vavai Malapai and Andrew Voice up front. And it's, it's a case of they really are um, convinced that they're working really hard, that they're trying to do all the little things right, that they're trying to, like Vavai has done such a good job of uh, changing directions and getting downfield and, and coming back and finding a, you know, a, a new running lane and, uh, and getting uh, a lot of good blocks from the wide receivers and, and all those little things that Andrew's talking about, how different it is you know, a year out from being the guy that was just grabbed and said, you gotta go in there last year. And now he's, got, he's a guy who's sort of a veteran helping the other guys, but he, you know, talking about what he focuses on every day is all the little things, just get better, get better. Uh, you know, get your feet just this, you know, and all the little details. He talked about details and uh, Stephen Carr talking about, you know, uh, one of the things that Coach Drevno has brought is how you've got to chip that defensive end as a, you know, as a running back. And uh, so you're hearing more of, of those kinds of, you know, getting the small things right, getting the details right. And uh, that, you know, that, I, I like the sound of that. Uh, talk to Jack Sears, the only quarterback we got to talk to today. And uh, he talks about, and it's obvious in his case, he's, he said, I'm getting, getting more confident every, uh, every practice. And, you know, he, he's having, um, it's hap what, what he's trying to do in practice, what they're trying to do with him, he said is happening. You know, we're learning. And uh, he said, I think, you know, that they're doing a pretty good job of, uh, of bringing the pressure. And these guys are, are doing a pretty good job of what's the lesson I need to learn, uh, you know, playing against that kind of pressure. And uh, he's, uh, he's more confident when you talk to him now. This isn't the same kid we were talking to in the spring. This is a kid feels much, much better about himself. I thought it was interesting, he made an interesting comment. He said, they said, do you pay attention to the other quarterbacks? He said, oh, absolutely. He said, he said, honestly, when JT makes a great throw, he said, I'm really excited about it. He said, it fires me up. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a great comment, I think. Mm -hmm. I like, I mean, I like the sound of that. Mm -hmm. An interesting note from today's practice, uh, Greg Johnson uh, got time at first. He got first team reps at that second corner position. Uh, so you got to ask Helton about that battle that Greg's having with Isaiah Langley. What do you, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, he was glad to that I asked about Greg Johnson. It's clearly he wanted to talk about it. And I mean, I, I have liked him, you know, since the first time I saw him on the field last year and then he minute broke his collarbone, didn't get to, but he's, you know, 195 pounds. He's, he's, he's a sudden kid got ball skills, he will knock you down. Uh, he gives, if he's out there, uh, he gives USC a couple of, you know, big strong corners with, with Iman. Uh, so uh, it'll be interesting to see it. You know, Isaiah Langley's done, uh, you know, a lot of good things, but it looks like that, that other corner is going in that direction for now. Um, you know, you've got the, you know, freshmen with, with great skills and, um, you know, other people who, who can clearly play. I mean, there are just so many, so many guys, but, uh, but I think uh, they're really looking for who's going to give us that kind of consistency. And uh, if you can get it out of a freshman, I think they don't count, you know, Greg, he's a redshirt freshman. They don't count him as a freshman since he was here all last year, even if he was, was injured. Uh, I think they really like that in, in terms of him being part of, uh, part of the way this is working. Uh, 
I thought one thing I, I thought was really good today, and we've talked about Coach Bradford and how he's coaching up the, the cornerbacks because we see him right in front of us. There was a play today where they were working on high pointing the ball and throwing it up and catching it you know, as high in the air as you can and you know, locating it, catching it. And something happened at the start of a play and Isaac Taylor Stewart was the guy, it was his play, and he sort of jogged down because the play wasn't gonna happen. And uh, Coach Bradford almost came out of his shoes. You know, don't ever do that again. If you're on this field, you're running. And I thought it was, I mean, that's not what we saw last year. Mm -hmm. And guys did do stuff like that. And, you know, so and we've talked about how differently they're being coached, yeah. but I thought that was a great point to make to Isaac Taylor, you know, Taylor Stewart uh, for a freshman to learn you just never do that. And uh, perfect. Yeah, that was the quote of the day for me because Bradford said, get that cool out of your system. If you're going to, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was acting too cool for school, apparently. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. So that was an interesting thing from Bradford. Uh, as far as the injuries go, uh, Helton noted that Palaie Nyoteote uh, had a successful meniscus uh, surgery today. He should be back in two to four weeks. Uh, Chuma Doga returned for the first time in about a week, uh, but he was pulled after uh, some time with the first team, so we don't know where he lies um, with that. Uh, Austin Jackson does have a light ankle injury. Uh, Helton expects him back later this week. Uh, Michael Pittman is still out with that shoulder sprain, but he surprisingly got nose surgery to correct a broken nose. Uh, Helton expects Pittman back next week, so that was a little surprising. Yeah, I think it worked out well. I mean, uh, you wanted to give Austin Jackson a little time off, so uh, so you get Chuma back. Uh, yeah. um, you... Uh, uh, use the time if you know, for example, you've got a shoulder sprain, an AC sprain for uh, Michael Pittman, what better time than to reset his uh, broken nose? I mean, I think there are you know, some, some smart things going on. You saw Marquis step out there uh, without a knee brace on and moving pretty well. He wasn't, wasn't you know, in the practice, but it uh, looked like he, he almost could have been. And then we, you know, we saw the, uh, the ever-present. Uh, uh, Cam Smith is, is getting... Uh, up to speed but he's not up to speed yet uh but he did and he was out there with his helmet but he was getting at one time three different coaches working with him because he's not getting the team part of it but uh, they were working on reacting and reading and moving laterally and all that and then there's porter gustin who's just you know just came up to if, if there were 12 guys you know on rehab island however you want to call it that this uh, right now he would he probably moved more than 11 of them uh, and uh if you would have, you know, told somebody he had, you know, surgery Thursday, there's no way you believe it. And, uh, you know, he was kind of observing all of practice and moving around with everybody. And it was a very slight limp and a, just a, a little a sleeve on that knee. But uh, when practice ends, you look out there and there he is at midfield throwing, you know, 50 yard passes into the end zone uh, to the wide receivers. I mean, he's just, and I, I, um, I told Jack Sears, I said, I think there's a fourth guy in the quarterback uh, competition now, and he looked out and he said, that's nothing new. He said, he can really launch it. And uh, just a, kind of an amazing uh, deal with, uh, with Porter. But, I, I, you know, I think he's fine, but uh, you can ask the question. Well, yes, I can hear the commenters already saying, well, given Porter's history and, and what happened last season, is it smart for him to be bouncing around as much as he is? How, how, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I know this last year I was just adamantly opposed to him trying to come back the same week he had the toe surgery with, you know, pins in his toes and just knowing he's going to pound that foot. And as strong as he is, he's going to, you know, pound that surgery apart and pound those pins apart. And he did exactly what we thought he would do the first half of the Texas game. And this is a whole different thing. It's, not, it's just a, a completely different kind of structural, uh, you know, physiological you know, deal. Uh, uh, so I think it mostly is um, you don't want it to swell up and apparently it doesn't look like it uh, from watching his movement and you don't want him to, uh, you know, mostly it's a matter of, you know, like pain tolerance and, yeah. and it's not so much a structural functional thing that, uh, that he needs to, you know, it's kind of a, a pad uh, and a, you know, a protection between the, you know, the knee in the knee joint and if um, if it's been trimmed up properly and all that there's probably not a lot of damage he can do it's uh, but he's Porter uh, I wouldn't let him come back with a toe 
with pins in it, that's for sure. But I mean, there are times you would probably say there are times, Porter, we're going to tell you no. But I don't think today was one of them. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for Monday's practice. For Dan Weber, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.